Hi, hi friends. Uh, today uh, we are going to discuss about the an important topic in uh, decision making or an important topic in economics. Uh, we are all familiar with the market economy, market structure, or uh, which is most important topic in regarding an economy. Why market is important? Uh, in today's world is that market plays an important role uh, in the allocation of resources or in determining the destiny of an economy. And we are very familiar with the different forms of markets and the study of uh, different forms of market is very important in today's world, especially in a world of uh, marketization or globalization or in a world where everything considered uh, as a commodity. Today we are going to discuss about the uh, market structure uh, which is most properly known as uh, imperfect type of market and uh, uh, we discuss today the market structure oligopoly. You, you are all very familiar with this market structure and uh, in today's uh, discussions, we would like to uh, talk on what oligopoly is. It is a market structure uh, where market is dominated by a small number of uh, uh, large producers. At a, there is a small uh, number of large producers. It is a market structure. So these two words are very important uh, in the case. Uh, two uh, words you have to take into consideration. What are these two words? Small number. The small number is very important. Also the large producers is also very important. So it is a market structure where we find small number of large producers. So these two terms are very significant uh, uh, because uh, it affects the decision making, it affects the uh, profits or it affects the market share and everything. So it is a market structure in which uh, market is dominated by small number of large uh, producers. And what is the motive of uh, this kinds of markets. Primarily the motive is profits. Profits. But uh, alone uh, a, a particular firm cannot make profits. So they will think of uh, collusions. Collusions. So while discussing about the market structure oligopoly, we have to keep in mind uh, some important factors such that uh, small in number and the uh, large producers. And the uh, important motive of these uh, firms is profits. And for making profits, uh, there will be collusions uh, among themselves or among the uh, companies. So uh, why it is important? Uh, it has some characteristics. While uh, uh, discussing or examining the important characteristics of the oligopoly market, we will find that uh, there is uh, a lot of linkages. A lot of linkages will be visible uh, uh, in this case. Linkage is an important characteristic, uh, which means that it is a, a collusion type behavior uh, is visible in the case of oligopoly markets. And uh, their demand curve is indeterminate. Indeterminate. We cannot predict what will be the demand in such a market. And uh, why it is possible? Why oligopoly is possible? Oligopoly is possible because all these uh, collusive persons or firms are successful in implementing obstacles of entry, obstacles of entry of other firms. And there is Surely there is competitions and there will be a lot of uh, publicity. Altogether, 
uh, all together we will find uh, oligopoly in the economy. So oligopoly is characterized by linkages and there will be uh, indeterminate demand curve and publicity is also very visible, competition is also there and they will be successful in implementing obstacles of entry. And uh, what are the different types? What are the different types of uh, uh, oligopoly? While uh, uh, we are examining the different types of oligopoly, we will come across uh, different types based on its characteristics, based on its characteristics. And uh, what are the different types that is visible uh, in, in, in oligopoly markets? We will uh, classify it as a pure or perfect oligopoly and uh, uh, there will be differentiated oligopoly and there will be collusive oligopoly and we also come across the non-collusive oligopoly, open oligopoly and closed uh, oligopoly. These are the uh, different types of oligopoly that are visible in an economy. Uh, each uh, classification has its own characteristics or its own features. And what are the important features that we will come across the uh, uh, call different types of oligopoly? So we see that uh, uh, why uh, it is a pure or perfect oligopoly when uh, homogeneous products are produced. We call it as uh, when uh, economy uh, produces uh, with uh, homogeneous products, firms uh, uh, is practicing pure or perfect oligopoly. But it is very rare, it is very rare to find out the uh, oligopoly uh, firms that produces homogeneous products. So what is a, a pure oligopoly? It is a, a oligopoly situation or market situation where all the firms in an economy produces homogeneous products. It is, a, uh, it is not a reality that all firms produces same kinds of producers. Uh, so another type of classification is uh, the differentiated uh, or uh, or imperfect or differentiated oligopoly is the another type of classifications. Why it is called a differentiated product? Or uh, when firms produce differentiated products. Differentiation may be uh, on the basis of colors, on the basis of some features, or on the basis of some offers. All these are the differentiations that they will make in the uh, case of products. Uh, when uh, the firms make the same uh, commodity but they uh, add some differentiations, some special features, that kind of oligopoly is known as the differentiated products. Uh, for example, we call it, uh, we uh, see the passenger cars or uh, soft things. There are a lot of soft things available in the market, but we uh, purchase uh, that particular commodity on the basis of some features. But it is a particular industry that produces different kinds of uh, soft drinks, beverages, uh, but uh, we choose us on the basis of some differentiations, uh, differentiations that we would like to, would like to, or we are passionate. So uh, the important feature of the differentiated oligopoly is that uh, they will be close substitutes. They will be close substitutes. And now we are examining the collusive oligopoly. Collusive oligopoly means uh, it is an oligopoly market situation where the firms cooperate with each other. Cooperate with each other. This is the uh, characteristics of the collusive oligopoly. Uh, they, there will be no competitions among themselves. Everything will be uh, determined on the basis of mutual understanding or uh, mutual discussions. For example, uh, in the case of uh, the modern market economy, we come across OPEC. OPEC. OPEC is an important example of the collusive oligopoly where uh, 
OPEC is an important example of uh, policy of liquidity. What is OPEC? You are familiar with uh, OPEC organization for petroleum exporting countries. Uh, this organization is really controlling the uh, market for petroleum. petroleum. So it is a, on the basis of these collusions that they are successful in implementing these uh, uh, market control policies. And uh, non collusive oligopoly is another kind of classification of oligopoly. What it means? In this case, uh, as against in the uh, collusive oligopoly, these firms compete with each other. Compete with each other. And um, they will try to uh, beat others. Beat others uh, uh, in the case of their uh, pricing policies, in the case of their uh, market share policies or distribution channels or these things. There will be uh, continuous price wars, price wars in this case. Most probably uh, the consumers may benefit in these uh, situations, but there are situations where uh, firms compete each other. And uh, next we are discussing about the open oligopoly. Uh, in this case, uh, the firms uh, provide full freedom of, uh, to new firms full freedom to new firms to uh, enter the market and there will be no restrictions. Such kinds of market we call it as uh, open uh, oligopoly markets. And closed uh, uh, oligopoly market we shows that uh, there will be only a few firms controls. A few firms. This is the uh, speciality of this market. Only a few firms control the entire market. Uh, uh, in the economy. Uh, this highlighted area shows that few firms dominates uh, the market and um, no other firms will not be uh, allowed to enter the market. These are the uh, examples uh, such as uh, for the uh, this purpose licensing or patents all these tools are adopted for uh, preventing the new entrance to the market. And uh, we are Coming uh, to discuss about uh, the international price discriminations. So, uh, so far we have discussed about the uh, oligopoly and different kinds of oligopoly markets and um, what are the features and how one market is differentiated from other kinds of market on the basis of its uh, special features. Uh, what are the characteristics, how this uh, characterization is made successful. And now uh, we are discussing about the international price discriminations. Uh, it is also an important uh, topic of discussion in today's world and it is uh, very important uh, in policy discussions also. W why it is uh, called uh, international price discrimination? Because uh, it, is, uh, it is practiced across the broad days of a country, generally, generally. And this international price discrimination is called the dumping. dumping. Why? Uh, uh, it is a practice of uh, charging lower prices abroad, lower prices abroad uh, and uh, higher prices at home. Just, uh, we have to uh, note that in this kinds of price discriminations, dumping are generally practiced by charging lower prices abroad and higher prices in the domestic market. And uh, there are different classifications to the dumping. Uh, generally, they include uh, persistent dumping, predatory dumping, and uh, sporadic dumping. These are the important classifications of dumping or international price discrimination. And now we are going to discuss what are the different types of classifications, how it is different. In the case of persistent dumping, there is a tendency of domestic monopolies to uh, maximize profit by selling the commodity at a higher prices in the domestic market and uh, lower price uh, in the foreign market. It is a continuous practice. That is why it is known as persistent. It is a continuous practice. So we have to focus on continuous practice of uh, selling uh, the uh, commodities at a higher prices. Continuous. Tendency of a domestic uh, monopolist to maximize total profit. And uh, 
uh, next we have uh, another type of uh, uh, dumping that predatory predatory market it is a temporary predatory uh, it's a temporary practice of uh, selling a product at a lower price abroad and um, higher price in the domestic market and why why it is practiced uh, uh, firms practiced this kinds of predatory dumping because it is a temporary first of all it is a temporary practice and the important motive of this uh, predatory dumping is that uh, to drive out to drive out the competitors we have to notice this uh, important feature foreign producers out of the business this is the important motive of the predatory dumping it is uh, completely temporary and the most important objective of this practice is to drive out of the competitors from the international market and uh, we have uh, this sporadic dumping sporadic dumping uh, it is an occasional practice of the uh, business firms because to offset or uh, to uh, unload the unforeseen or temporary surplus uh, there are some situations in which uh, we uh, fail to find out a sufficient market in the domestic economy for example we we have a lot of production because of a good rain season in our country but there is no demand there is no matching demand in our domestic economy so what what, what should be the issue uh, we will get very very minimum prices for the uh, product we have in the domestic economy so to uh, to have to unload this surplus generally firms adopts the uh, sporadic dumping so it is to oh, unload the unforeseen or oh, and temporary surplus of a product so it is known as sporadic dumping so international price discrimination is practiced uh, uh, because of the uh, different situations uh, we have uh, classified it on the basis of uh, uh, the objectives mainly the objectives mainly they include persistent dumping persistent means that uh, it is continuous persistent means continuous continuous cycle our practice and predatory means it is temporary and uh, sporadic means uh, it is to uh, unload unforeseen unforeseen surplus so we have to focus on this uh, aspects of dumping and what are the objectives important objectives of uh, dumping uh, the objectives of the dumping uh, includes the to find a place in the foreign market and to sell surplus commodity expansion of industry and new trade relations all these are the objectives of the uh, dumping or international price discriminations uh, and uh, if you have any questions you may uh, text in the uh, inbox or have uh, you may contact me in my in my email on uh, on uh, department email on for the classification may be given uh, for your uh, queries and like that so uh, today we have just concluded uh, about the uh, uh, oligopoly and uh, international price discriminations uh, it is a brief discussions we have to have further discussions and studies thank you very much